Cheers to the group here. All right, ready? Yeah. Oh, cheers, Andy. Uh, hey, everybody. We got Colin on for right now this morning. Hello. Thank you, Colin, for being on. Oh, of course, Brian. Yeah. Happy, and, to, uh, happy to show up for the YouTube community. Absolutely. <laughs> Always, man. Um, and we got lots of pens to talk about here because we're yes. launching so much new stuff. We can't even, like, put stuff out on, yes. <laughs> on all the new things. You should see our calendars. It's just so many products <laughs> each day, and it's like, oh, i got to talk about each one. And, um, <laughs> but it's exciting. It's I tough. love having new products. Yeah, this is, like, the busiest oh, launch yeah. time that we've e probably ever had. Definitely. It's crazy. Yeah. So um, we know we're getting some questions about some various new things that we've launched, so we wanted to just kind of talk about some of them. Um, one of the first ones is Visconti Mirage. Yes. Um, that we know we've got some questions about. I don't have every color here on me, um, but I have three of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I got the red, the midnight blue, and the green. Um, so we're getting some questions like, how does it compare to the Rembrandt? Yes. Uh, you got a Rembrandt. I do have a Rembrandt. Yeah. Um, how do you like the Rembrandt? What's I, your... I actually really like the Rembrandt. Yeah? Um, okay. I think there's a lot of... I don't want to say hate, but people wish that it was a gold nib. Um, okay. But it's a steel nib, and I would say it is one of the best writing nibs that I have, hmm. including gold nibs. What nib do you have on this? I thing? think that is a medium. Yeah. All right. Um, it is very smooth. Um, cool. Just writes perfectly every time. Yeah. Um, and so I really like that. So I think the steel nib that Visconti does really rocks it, and I wouldn't necessarily pump the brakes on purchasing one just because of the steel nib. Yeah, and I think that because it crosses over into the threshold where you can buy some gold nibs for around that same yeah. price, the Lamy 2000, mm -hmm. the Pilot Vanishing Point, you know, the Falcon, things like that, yeah. that's where it catches some of that flag. Yeah, and th that makes sense. I mean, the VP, they're all great pens, but I, I don't think just because a steel nib versus a gold nib necessarily makes it. Um, that is a great <laughs> debate in the pen community, isn't yes. it? and I, I, yes. I'll rep for the steel nibs. There um, you go. Uh, but the thing about the the Mirage is it's their most affordable pen. And mm -hmm. Affordable is kind of in quotations re relative Visconti. to Visconti. Visconti absolutely. Um, I'm not exactly. I think it's like 130. Yeah, I don't remember the price. <laughs> it's on Gulebens.com. Yes. Yeah, I think 139 is what it is. Um, if Rachel was here, she would tell us. Yeah, the price. magnetic cap, which I actually really love. Same thing with the mm -hmm. Rembrandt. Yep. Um, it's a firm magnet too. Like yes. it's got a good grab to it. Yeah. You know, you know it's supposed to be there. Now, um, the interesting thing about this is that um, it has a magnetic cap, but it's not, it's not like this one where you can spin it. It's yes. not just like any which way. It's got these notches in here, mm -hmm. which lock it kind of into place because it's got this kind of faceted yes. design or fluted design. Yeah, I was going to say fluted, but I yeah. didn't know if that was the right one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's a light fluting, um, a tapered go. fluting facety kind of thing. All um, the above. It's it was it's like impossible to describe the mm -hmm. shape of this thing. When we were writing the product yeah. description, we were like, what is this thing? <laughs> um, it's the Mirage, that's what it is. Um, but the nibs are different on this. Product. Oh, they are. Okay. They are different. Yeah. So that's where I'm curious to get your take on it. Of course. As the the Rembrandt <laughs> advocate here. Yeah. Um, so they changed the nibs a little bit. In fact, worldwide, the nibs are changing on the Rembrandt and the Van Gogh. I do remember. So that. in the U.S., they're still with the old nibs. Mm -hmm they're changing to the new ones here, um, which I think they still write really nice. And in fact, part of the reason for the change is mm -hmm. because the fine and the medium are not that different from each other. Yes. On on the old version, mm -hmm. the new version, it's more distinct. Cool. That's part of the motivation mm -hmm. for wanting to do it. Yes. And to I, make the fine nib finer. That's good. Yes. I know there's a lot of people that really like their extra fines. There you so go. Exactly. More could skew that way. Exactly. I think better. So yes, it's, it's the, the nib's a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if you, you know, have really looked at it too closely no. yet. The nib is smaller. Mm -hmm. So is it for everybody? Not necessarily, but um, you know, it's uh, it's the kind of thing that it was a compromise, <laughs> you know? You just had to, you just had to, to make it work. So, um, you know, do they write, let me see if I make sure I have it inked up here. So this is, um, that's the broad. Let me get you a medium so you can get a fair comparison of here. So I think that's the, that's the fine. So try the um, medium here. And let me know what you think. Oh, yeah. I mean, that writes just as well. Yeah? Um, you digging that? Yeah, I mean. Now try the fine. <laughs> try the fine. Okay. Have you had experience with the fine on the other one? I yes, because we have Rembrandt another or. Rembrandt in our library, so. There you go. Now, right, let's see. So you can see the difference there between the medium and fine. It's pretty distinct. Yeah. And we'll show quite, here. quite different. Much, much more different than the, the Rembrandt and the Van Gogh have yes. been. So, um, good move on that part. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> still got a spring clip, magnetic you know, enclosure, still posts. It has to post in a certain orientation because of that fluted design. Yeah. 
um, but you know, same type of resin material. Mm -hmm. It's got that same kind of swirly thing, different colors. Yeah. It's really sort of similar to mm -hmm. you know the Rembrandt, but a little bit cheaper and the different nibs. Yeah, so, that's awesome. There you go. So you can determine for yourself if it's worth it. Yeah. But, let's uh, uh, let's move on to the Pilot Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, these are the new watches from Pilot here in America. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think they're twenty three dollars, twenty three fifty, mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. around there. We should have looked this up ahead of time. <laughs> yes. Um, where's Rachel when you need her? But. Um, that's my life, man. That's why, that's, why I, that's why I don't know anything offhand is because Rachel knows it all for me. Yes. Her and I have been together 17 years, so it's just... 17. It's an efficiency. Yeah. Yes. It's, that's Such a compliment. That's for real. Yeah. In fact, um, actually, what day is today? 14th. Tomorrow will be the 17th anniversary of when Rachel and I met. Wow. For the first time. November's a big month for you. Big month. I know, <laughs> right? Day, oh. Our anniversary of Goulet, your... Yep. First meeting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Rachel. My, yep, exactly. Um, so, yeah. Well, back to the Explorer. Yes. Um, <laughs> we just got sidetracked. We did. Um, it uses enough. the same nib that is on the Metropolitan, that's on the Kakuno, that's on the Prera, I believe. 20, 2360. 2360. Yeah, I said 2350. No, so. wonder, no wonder I can't remember the price. It's a weird price. Anyway. It is a little strange. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's a it's a very light pen. It's it a it's a larger light. pen than the Metropolitan. I would um, say longer. I if you're say. used to the Magnum from Diplomat, it has very similar yeah. kind of lack of weight. <laughs> I, would, yeah. I don't want to say weight because it is yeah, very light. Yeah, it's definitely one of the lighter pens. In fact, I'm looking yeah, at the he's... exact weight of it because I again don't have it memorized. Um, but the weight overall is 12 grams. That's Pretty light. That's really light. That <laughs> might be one of the lightest pens that we have. I think so. That's like almost platinum preppy light. Mm -hmm. Like that's the kind of territory that we're talking about here. So if you like really light pens, this would be the one for you. And yeah. uh, you know, it has a less harsh step than the Metropolitan. Mm. You know, so it's a um, it's a snap cap, just like the Metropolitan. Um, nice firm cap. You know, posts yeah. really well. It's a bit long when it's posted, but because it's so light. You don't notice any difference mm -hmm. at all. Um, nib, like you said, is exactly the same yeah. on the Metropolitan. You can actually, you know, pull Just it out swap and swap it. it. And well, they're in there a little tight, yeah. but you can pull it out. Same the the nib design is a little different. Mm -hmm. It looks a little different than the Metropolitan. Yeah. But the Prera Plumix Metropolitan, mm -hmm. you know, those all swap oh, yeah, with Plumix. this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I have a. A couple Plumixes that I just swap onto my Metro, onto my Kikuno, yeah, yeah. just to get more of that stub feel. Exactly. Um, uh, one thing that I've gotten questions about with the Explorer, does it fit the Con 70? And I have actually tested it. You have? It does oh. not. It does not. Which is oh, unfortunate. That's too bad. Um, another check mark for the Kikuno. Because you would think that it, yeah. That's the right. barrel, it fits perfectly in the barrel. Uh -huh. The connection to the actual grip is not great. Really? Yeah. Interesting. It like, it can hold a little bit, but I would not recommend it. Really? Yes. I gotta try this yes. one. Yes, go find a Con 70. You, but I gotta try it because <laughs> I have a whole bin of converters. A bin of converters. Yeah, because I gotta reference these all the time. Like yeah. when we just carried the Penagra Snorkel, it was like, okay, yeah, we that makes sense. all the converters that we have. Pilot. Andy's giving us the finger here. <laughs> the, the finger, not the, the, not the, the finger. finger. Yes. I don't know, man. If you jam it on there, that feels pretty solid to me. Okay, this is, well, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but there was another Explorer that did not have this it secure of the Really? Grip. Okay. All Maybe right. I wasn't jamming it on because I was worried. Yeah, yeah. See, but with Pilot, sometimes the converters are a little tight. And this, mm -hmm. one, this one has been done a few times too. So if you have a new Con 70, it might feel a little tighter mm -hmm. and you just got to kind of go ham on it. All right, well. So let's see. I don't know, man. Yeah. Maybe I'm know. just completely wrong. <laughs> don't trust me ever we again. We have to revisit. But, okay. Um, See, I got like no fear when it comes to pens. I'm like, yank the nib, jam the converter, just because I've seen this so many times with Biff various And I've had other pens. people around me test it. All Jess, right. We're going to have a converter jam Jano. session. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> okay. So we got more to test. You like yes. that, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's the Explorer. Um, and then we want to talk about the Diplomat. Yes. I know we're going to press for time here, Andy. Yes, um, we'll do it pretty quick. So we got the Diplomat with the 14 karat gold nibs. Yes. Now these pens are in like the 350 range. So yes. it's definitely a jump on a, what is already kind of a premium steel nib. Yeah, when you add the gold and, nib to a premium steel nib, it really, you know, I think it's 
I think it's under 300 though. I gotta get the right price. Yes. <laughs> I think 280. Okay. Yeah, 280. So I think 350 is the MSRP. Yes. That's what it is. So 280. Mm -hmm. 280 is you know. For it's, sure. It's definitely in solid gold nib territory mm -hmm. range. Um, so I have them all linked up if you want to give a little test drop yeah, there. I just put them in the nib nook. Mm -hmm. um, so these are interesting to us because we've never had a 14 karat Yovo gold nib before. So we've had the 18 karat on Edison. Um, and we've seen 18 karat on uh, other things like uh, uh, Monte Grappa, mm -hmm. but we've never seen the 14 karat. So I was curious, like, what's the difference between a 14 and an 18 sure. in practicality? And of course, what's the difference between the steel and the gold? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, I think it, I mean, it writes really well, as yeah. you would expect from, you know, a Yovo. As I should, right? <laughs> yeah. Gold nib, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Um, the nib itself is actually very attractive. It's cool. <laughs> it's, um, it's a two-tone. Yeah. It's uh, hot. You can say it, Colin. It's hot. It's a hot nib. <laughs> All right. Well, you just made it. You just took it way too far. Um, I'm never going to say a nib is hot. So, well, I just did. <laughs> I don't know that I ever have, actually. Uh, but, but this definitely did. would have been a worthy addition to our video, which was best the, looking fountain pen nibs. Yeah, yeah. I will link to it. We just didn't have it at the time. There. Sorry. Yes. There you go. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so really good looking nib. Um, in terms of the, the 14 versus 18K, you, you seldom can tell a difference. Like yeah. there's not a lot of brands that have both a 14 and an 18K. Mm -hmm. You know, Pilot used to have a 14K on the Vanishing Point oh. actually back in the day. I didn't know that. They switched to an 18K, you can hardly tell the difference. Makes sense. Um, and then uh, I think it's Aurora has a 14 and 18K. Mm -hmm. 18K is just like just a little bit yeah. springier, but it's so subtle, most people won't tell the difference. Um, so for this one, if you're used to like an Edison 18K, mm -hmm. this is just maybe 10% less springy than the, the Yovo 18K oh, okay. nibs, but still it, it's pretty good. It's not like a flex nib or anything yeah. like that, no, but it's going to be a little softer than the steel. Still very smooth, mm -hmm. um, but you know, for everybody, I would say if you want a really nice pen, you just get the steel. The steel is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But if you got the means and you're like, I want to get that, just a little bit of a kind of a premium experience, the gold nib. Is, is a really nice writing nib. Definitely. I think you'd enjoy it. And it looks really good. It's hot, so, you know. There you goes Brian again. Look at <laughs> <laughs> so hot. Uh, <laughs> wow. We've traumatized Andy <laughs> for this video, but anyway, Colin, thank you so much for being on today. Course, you may yeah. regret it after the fact, but. No, um, <laughs> just, we're just done with hot nibs, and then we'll move on. Hey, video idea, Andy, hot nibs. No. No, no, not so much. <laughs> not gonna happen. You know, well, what do you wear? They're not all winners, right? Well, thanks for letting me join you, Brian. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right, I hope you all have enjoyed this. You can check out a lot of what we talked about here on GoulayPens.com. Thanks for watching, and right on. Right on.